Let's bust out some brand new Vikings roster projections. All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lopagus show. I'm One Bar with Lopagus, and we got a preseason game in the books. We got five cuts already made. You're damn right we're going to break out a new 53-man roster projection for the Vikings. It's a perfect time to do it. Why not? Uh, they've already had one joint practice with the Niners as well, so a lot of things happening in Vikings land, and I think we can maybe start to – this thing's starting to take shape. Like, uh, I, I just keep getting rounder. This, this Vikings roster is starting to fill out nicely. It does, but they always throw a wrinkle in things, and they will this year. Before we get into that, remember, subscribe to the channel. Let's get the 8,000 subs. Let's do this. We're almost at 7,500, baby. And don't forget to hop on tonight for Horned Up coming at you at 7 p.m. More Vikings talk, uh, previewing the game this uh, Saturday night against the 49ers and probably some sort of game, I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah, and I am already thirsty. Thirsty to see who's on the offense. Let's do this. Let's, let's just splash her up there. Here it is. <laughs> Yeah, um, let's see. I'm looking let's at start, yours. Let's start looking. with the quarterbacks. I mean, we, we spoiler alert, a lot of these are very similar. We have a few differences. So, as always, in the comments, let's uh, let's see what you would have done different. But um, quarterbacks, I don't think anyone's really going to argue that. No, I don't think so at all. The only thing I'm arguing is that why why are they still splitting reps with Sean Mannion and Kellen Mond uh, today at practice? made no sense to me after what we saw, the difference in those two uh Whatever. I don't know why they need to keep seeing more from Sean Mannion, but I think this is the way it's going to look with Cousins and Mon at the depth chart. One weird-ass wrinkle that I could see having is they just randomly keep all three, and that would just burn my ass. Burn it. Yeah, it, I, I don't see the point of it, but again, you know, Sean Mannion apparently is just this really good sideline guy. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but uh, running backs look the same. There has been some scuttlebutt now about Alexander Madison after the performance on uh, last Sunday afternoon, and then there's been talk to with Vargas getting cut. Like, why are they cutting fullbacks? Maybe C.J. Ham doesn't have a spot. So those are the two that uh, Madison potentially being traded and Ham being cut. Are only the changes I could see at this position. Yeah, I think Madison will definitely be on the table for a team looking at the trade deadlines if the Vikings want to give him up. The C.J. Ham thing, I'm just really leaning on the fact that they wouldn't do him dirty. They would have already gotten rid of him. That's the only. That, I, for a guy like C.J. Ham, a Minnesota boy, he's been around. If he's not in the plans, I think they would have got rid of him by now. I agree. I agree as well. Let's go to receivers where I see a, a big one big difference here. Yeah, so I think Jefferson, Thielen, Osborne, Smith, Marset are in cement. And then we each have them keeping Naylor. Uh, and then you got BC, and I'm, I went with old Jackson. Yeah, and I think there's a third guy to consider here, and that's the veteran Albert Wilson, who had two touchdowns last week. Uh, I think he was ahead oh, of yeah, L, ahead of Tristan today on the on the depth chart. He was actually sixth in the pecking order, it sounds like. So there is some possibility for changes here, and, I, and I've liked what I've seen with Tristan Jackson. You were kind of on him from the start. I give you credit there, but I just go back to BC Johnson being a you know a solid route runner, a veteran. I, I think they're going to keep BC. I really do. Yeah, I'm just going with the the upside on Jackson, and um, yeah, that's really it. I think I think when you get after these top four, you could pretty much flip a coin between about three or four guys. Tight end, we are spot on. Ben Ellison, see you later. Nick Muse, see you later. And uh, Buyer, see you later. So Smith, Munt, Davidson. I like that. I like that group. I like that. Their tight end group. What are you doing? Oh my God, John Gruden is on the show. I can't believe it. I can't do it as well uh, as you. Yeah, Johnny Munt, Zach Davidson, they have shown some stuff in preseason so far. So, yeah, you know, you look back. The, the question is here, too, if they're going to keep an extra spot, you hate to use it on a tight end, but if, if Irv Smith Jr. is not healthy, do you think they're actually going to roll with two? Uh, no, I think Ellison will stick around. The, the big thing, I know Johnny Munt can block, but we're really getting rid of just that big, beefy blocking tight end. But maybe that's why they're keeping C.J. Hamp. It could be. It could be. Let's scoot on over. When I was at the doctor's office as a kid, sometimes he told me to scoot down my trousers. Yeah, that's part, of their, that's part of their job. Uh, you got a 10. I, 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 I'm I, going skimpy with nine, and the only difference is you have them keeping low. I got Lowe's ass going to the practice squad, and that's really it. Um, but one one thing, Chris Reed, little, I, just, I don't know. I mean, do you think he's in danger of not making the team? I don't hear anything about this guy. Well, I think he, I don't know if he's been healthy lately the last couple of days. I think there's don't something going me. on there. He didn't even suit up uh, against the Raiders, so I, I don't know if he was healthy. I think he's 
I think he's safe. Uh, the guy I was actually considering keeping here was Austin Schlotman. Uh, he came in with the twos last week. So he's someone to watch as far as uh, if they do keep 10, it would be him or low. I have low on here, but I'm really certain to think he is uh, going to be a practice squatter this year. Yeah, I'm. Uh, it's it pains a little bit just the fact that Oliudo is on our final roster, but he it's just you have to. There's nobody else. There's nobody yeah. else. Oliudo. I think we have to get familiar with the fact that he's going to be on this team again. Well, maybe he can get turn to the turn of the games this year multiple times. Udo. Udo. Multiple times. Let's go to the defense. That's going to shut every team down they face again. Fairly similar. <laughs> Yeah, and um, I see you got Adam Whale making it, and maybe I'm jumping on the T.Y. McGill train, too, after one big game. Same with Jonathan Bullard, but just the way those guys were worked, even when we were there watching camp, uh, where they were in the rotation over guys like Adam Whale uh, and these younger guys. We already saw Tyra Stevenson get let go. Uh, to me, the one wild card here is Jalen Twyman. I, I, they, one of the coaches was just raving about him today. So I, he's my wild card who could be kept over a Bullard or a McGill. Yeah, I, I think Otomayo is definitely going to make the team. McGill is having a fantastic, not, not just a great preseason game, had a great camp. I think the wild card, I still think James Lynch um, could be a wrinkle in here as well. I'm not writing this guy off just yet. Just yet. But I did in this round. This round. Yeah, I don't know. I you were more impressed with him uh, on Sunday than I was. Adam Whale, I don't know. I, I think t- I think he might be practice squad. I just you're not hearing much about him at all. Um, so I'll be keeping an eye on this week to see how much he does get in against the Niners. All right. Well, I think everybody can agree with all of our linebackers up to the point where you have him keeping Valane. I have him keeping Janarius Robinson. Um, kind of a gross one for me just to keep Janarius Robinson, but it's more just the unknown and. And like James Lynch, this dude was out there a ton. He was the, out there a ton. So they're clearly looking at him heavily. If they if they are already writing this guy off, I don't think he would have been out there that much. Well, the other thing, too, is, I mean, how many inside guys are you going to keep opposed to outside guys? I, I, I had Blake Lynch on here in the last minute. I swapped him out with Luigi Valane. Uh He was higher on the depth chart than I thought he was going to be. I know there has been a whole lot of buzz about him in camp, but I think they do like this kid. Uh, Blake Lynch, I mean, he apparently is behind Troy Dye. Uh, after, what I, after what I saw from Chaz Surratt, uh, I don't want him on this team. So I, I decided just to keep the, the four inside guys and then keep more pass rushers. Um, all right, let's go to cornerback. I, I got uh, I skimped out again. You got uh, you got him keeping Harrison Hand and Boyd. I think one surprising thing is we both have him keeping Boyd on this one. But I, I did get rid of Harrison Hand. I, I thank him mightily for his service. A guy who's been very quiet, and uh, I don't know, this new coaching staff doesn't seem to be really taking to Harrison Hand that much. Chris Boyd, I think he makes the team. He's a veteran player. He is what he is. Decent on special teams. Probably fun to have around. I I think he's going to be safe as much as I don't want him to be. You said you keep saying veteran player, but you know what? Ty Smith was also a veteran player. (laughs) He is out the door. They didn't care one bit. Well, I mean, he's a veteran by years. I don't know, but if games played, he may not be, could be considered a veteran. That might be true. Let's go to safety. I actually have them keeping my third of the game last week. Josh Vertelis <laughs> is back. Last round, he wasn't there, but I got I four safeties. I'm going with four safeties. Yeah, I don't know. I, safety's been a position the Vikings have really skimped on when it, when it comes to keeping players. I know Mike Zimmer didn't value the position as much as some other coaches do. I don't know. I just don't think there's a whole lot of depth here at this position for the Vikings. So that's why I don't keep Josh Mattelos. I'd rather keep somebody else. Um, but we don't, I mean, I guess in a pinch, you could put Patrick Peterson back if you really got in some injury concerns. I went one less corner. So I beefed back up at safety with Cam Bynum being able to kind of mix around a little bit. And we know the three specialists, so we're not even going to talk about them. But uh, overall, I mean, like I said, there's going to be something crazy that happens. But I think, I think linebacker and I think offensive line and receiver are going to be the ones that really watch. Yeah, I think there's really four or five spots that are kind of, you know, question marks right now, who they're going to keep, which way they could go, different directions they could take. Uh, I guess it depends what they value and, and, you know, who they feel the best football players are. And I think that's when you got factor in the special teams on those four or five guys. Who are the best special teamers out of that group? Not Dan um, Chisina. Oh, no, he wasn't on either of ours. Uh, again, with a big whiff last Sunday against the Raiders, Dan Chisina. Great at getting down the field. Just can't finish. I don't have that problem. No comment. All right. Well, anyways, that's our 53. Let us know in the comments what you would have done different, who do you have kept, and be sure to join our asses live tonight at 7 o'clock with a cold beer in your hand. 
How much time we got? Seven o'clock. I say you check your watch. We got six hours and twenty nine minutes, baby. All right. Remember this: ancient Egyptians used opium to calm crying babies. 